Schultz. He enters the ring with 17 wins and two losses. He represented Great Britain in the inaugural Sugar Ray Leonard Cup against the USA. And tonight is hoping to join his father in becoming a world champion. Please welcome the challenger for the title, Ross the Boss Minter. And across the ring stands the champion, flighting out of the blue corner and wearing the black and red trucks, weighing in at 10 stone six and three quarters. He brings with him a record of 31 wins and just two losses as a professional. He is the former British welterweight champion and tonight makes the first defence of his world title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Chorley in Lancashire, the reigning WBU welterweight champion of the world, Michael Jennings. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Your instructions in the dressing room by my commands at all times. I want no notice with the head. Shake hands. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 12 three minute rounds for the WBU World Waterweight Championship. Well, here we go. It's Chorley versus Crawley, the Lurcher versus the boss, Jennings against Minter. It could be special. Jennings, as you'll see, has a height and reach advantage, and Minter will try and get right on him, as he is doing from word go here, and try and throw bombs. He believes that's the way to beat Jennings, that's the way young Muttley did it, he got in range, and when he got the opportunity, he really made his punches count. Jennings, if he can do so, will fight at distance, pick his man off with rangy shots, with jabs like those, and Minter, a pressure fighter, who's got a tremendous heart, is tagged in the early stages. Minter tried to suggest there's no damage done, but he felt that one, Duke. He should have took an eight count, John. He went straight down. He got caught flush with a right hand from Jennings. It was as, as quick and as, as flush as you like. Should have took an eight count there. If Jennings jumps on him, he's still not recovered yet. If Jennings can jump on him again, this fight could be over very, very quickly. Worst possible start, this, for Ross Minter. Jennings now knows that he can hurt him, he's stung him in the very first minute. And of course, that does beg the question how much that defeat against Freddy Curiel has affected Ross Minter. Sometimes it can only take one defeat to reduce a fighter's punch resistance, and it's early stages to say that, and Minter can come back from it, of course he can, but if he does succumb, the question will be there, what damage was done? And that Jennings is having a big, big opening round. Has Minter recovered? No, I don't think he has quite recovered, John. He needs to think about clearing his head. You know, maybe just back off just slightly and just try to get through this first round. Shouldn't he be thinking about winning the round? It should be a matter of survival. Jennings, who's a drummer in a punk rock band up on the Northwest Circuit called The Shocks. It would certainly be a shock if he took Minter out in the opening round. Nobody, but nobody anticipated that one. And the thing is, is that, you know, Jennings won't slow down. If anything, he gets quicker. He's a fit kid. He's like a workaholic when he's in there, he's like a surgeon. The really punch... good jab that was, worked his way through the lead, but Minter appears to have recovered now. He's recovered his composure and he's trying to get back into his rhythm. Yeah, as try as he may, I just think it's the wrong tactics at this present moment in time. Should be thinking about just clearing his head. Every time the right hand lands from, from, from the opponent there, he just gets through. The one thing about Minter is that he does not have great lateral movement. When I commentated on that ESPN and uh, ITV contender series, Teddy Atlas picked up the fact from a really early stage that Minter's lack of lateral movement was leaving him open to possible big shots from Curiel, and that's the way it happened. Oh, good shot! Good work from Minter in the closing seconds of the round, enjoying his best little period.
the new Renault Twingo. Serious fun. From £7,500. So a good start from Jennings. Minter finished the round strongly. And his corner telling Minter that he's got to work in behind the jab. He can't just keep walking forward and absorbing those right-hand pop shots from Jennings, which so nearly put him on the seat of his pants in the opening seconds. Well, the thing is, also with Minter, there'll be mental scars from his last defeat uh, when he boxed in the Contender Series. You know, he hasn't, he hasn't been able to fight since then for obvious reasons. But now, you know, if you would have thought there was going to be a knockout, you would have thought it would have been, it would have come from Minter. But he's been stung now by Jennings. But he did finish that first round well. There were two or three shots which got their way through. One thing you can say about Jennings, though, is that he is always immensely fit. He looked a little bit drawn, I thought, at the weigh-in yesterday, but he's a natural athlete. He's got speed, he's got athleticism, and just watch the way he moves. He moves with the, the grace and the agility of, if you like, a natural athlete. Uh, Jennings is an, is an outstanding boxer. If you want to teach somebody how to box, you could put on a take of this kid, because I tell you what, he's the consummate pro when it comes to boxing skills and lateral movement. Warren Minter almost teed off with a right hand, did get through with a left, and suddenly encouragement for the very sizeable band of Minter fans who are here in the audience tonight and already in the second round. This fight is really warming up. I remember it's been a part of three years ago when uh, Michael Jennings went in the ring against Bradley, Wal Bradley Price. He said Bradley Walsh against Bradley Price. What a fight that was. Minter's got to cut the ring off quicker. He cannot allow uh, this young man to just dominate the fight from range and just move from left to right. He's given him plenty of movement. And Minter just isn't cutting the ring off quick enough. He's allowing Jennings to hit and not get hit. Jennings trained as ever by Brian Hughes, as he has been through his career. Wise old fight figure from the Collie House and Moston Gym. And just look at them, they're going toe to toe in the second round. And Minter, by sheer willpower, by heart, is forcing his way back into this fight. And he is wanting to say to Jennings, You are not going to get this all your own way, and I will turn this into my fight. Well, Jennings did a very clever move there. He actually stepped to the right and speared Mentor with the jab. Then he moved back to his left and hit him with another jab, and that's what brought that, that onslaught from Minter. Minter damaged his hand in the fight against Curiel last year and as well fractured a rib. That went again in training four months after that. It's contributed to his long gap of ring from ring action. So it would be no surprise if there was a little bit of rust in there. He says that the sparring has gone well and his trainer Johnny Eames. And he's just starting to enjoy a little bit more success in this second round. Jennings wanting to hold on. It's fit. Sasa. Lock and load. Jet Lee. Jason Statham. A full throttle action thriller. War on DVD Monday. Come on, come back with the left foot now. Well, Michael Jennings told in no uncertain terms that he is allowing himself to be forced into fighting Ross Minter's sort of fight. So it's just as you said, Duke, psychological advantage to Minter in that second round after Jennings really bossed the first, almost had his man down, but Minter has now got back into it and is fighting his strategy. Well, Minter has to keep his head and his chin buried deep into his chest to avoid any kind of infringement, any kind of head uh, clashes or anything like that. Nice little two-fisted attack by Minter. He's fighting like a man possessed. He wanted to prove himself the power puncher in this contest. He's not a notable knockout artist, only eight stoppage victories in his 17 wins. 
The ratio is pretty much the same as Jennings, who's got 14 out of 31, but Minter believes that he's the harder puncher, and maybe that's a factor. But Jennings now, as you can see, is trying to respond to the advice of his corner, to get up on his toes, to get back on his bike and use that jab, use his movement, box. Well, if, if Jennings keeps putting distance between him and Minter, like he's boxing in and then he gets on the back foot and boxes from the outside, he wins the fight or he wins the rounds. A lot of interest in this bill tonight. I saw John Conti, one of British boxing's greats, not too many years ago. He's at ringside. Kevin Mitchell. Jamie Moore, Matthew Macklin, good fighters, all of them. And all enjoying this one, which in boxing terms is such a good trade fight. It's a fantastic matchup. The only thing that worries me about Minter's pace at this point is that he's putting so much in. The longer the fight goes, you know, we know that Jennings can keep up this pace, maintain it, and even go quicker than what he's doing is now. Not too many fitter fighters around than Michael Jennings. And he's settled back down now into fighting his fight. Which Absolutely. Is exactly what they said do. Absolutely. Oh, good shot though from Minter. Crowding his man, little clubbing right hand. The champs go up for Minter. Penny for the thoughts of Father Allen as he hears those shouts. Well, Minter not doing a great job in cutting the ring off. He's following Jennings around. He needs to step to his right and try the right hand then come back with his combinations, because he's following him around the same way. Jennings, for me, came of age in 2005 when he destroyed Jimmy Vincent to win. Oh, good shot from, from Minter, right uppercut. Jennings took it well. I would say Jennings came of age when he beat Vincent, for me. And has fought at a very high level since then, but Minter finishing the, finishing the round strongly. The new Renault Twingo, serious fun, from £7,500. Ten seconds. Seconds out. Alan Minter, watching at ringside, knows now that his son, Ross Minter, is cut. He was caught by a clash of heads, and he was badly cut as well, up around the hairline, but they've put a smear of grease over it, and they've staunched the flow, and because it's so far away from the eye, it's not the sort of cut which is going to potentially stop the fight. But it's an encumbrance, it's a hindrance, and it's something that he's now got to live with, and it's something that Jennings will see, and he'll know that that is going to work away to his favour. Uh, Mintz is still looking for that one shot, still looking for that, that knockout punch to turn this fight around. Fourth round, Duke McKenzie scoring it at the moment to Michael Jennings. The but two rounds to one. The better boxing, the snappier punches. Lovely right hand by Mensa landed there on Jennings. Stopped him in his tracks. Absolutely. mincer has got his feet firmly planted on the floor, looking for haymakers almost. The clash of styles always promised to be intriguing. And so it's showing. That was more of a slip than any real power shot from Minter there. The boss written across those red shorts. The right hand is his danger shot. Came so close to stopping Freddie Curiel in his last fight in that fourth round. 
And on that occasion, he was caught badly in the fifth, I think it was, with a shot to the body, which did the ribs. And from then on, it was always going the American's way. This time, he probably knows with some degree of certainty that the fight is going to have to go to the latter stages because Jennings will be content to stay out of harm's way and try and box him with little combinations, get in and out all night if he possibly can. Jennings still looking to step to the right to come back with the right hand. That's the punch that he had the success with in the early rounds. And he's looking to adopt the same thing again. Minton needs to stop waiting, he's just waiting a little bit too long on him now. His pace is starting to drop, and Jennings is just starting to get through just a little bit freer. Jennings landed with a good left uppercut 20 or 30 seconds ago. And Minter, as you say, looking as though he's feeling the pace now in the fourth. No surprise, because it's been fast, furious, frenetic. Oh, great shot! Almost decked Minter, great right hand, and it was the first shot that did it. A terrific quality right hand, and Minter knows it, acknowledged it, says to his corner, I'm all right, but is he? The bell has gone, the bell has gone, and it didn't come a moment too soon. Big round for Jennings, and let's hear what they're saying in that corner. Panic, nice deep breaths, come out of the round, put your hands down. Yeah. Yeah? Right. Bang. Yeah, There's Alan it's Minter, got to be worried at the way this fight is unfolding, and there's that right hand. Well, the pace dropped significantly in that round, and Jennings was allowed time to plant the right hand superbly on Minter's jaw. He'd been looking for the right hand, he stepped across earlier in the round, looked for the shot, it wasn't there, looked for it again, and it was there and took it magnificently. Into the fifth round. Twelve round fight, and Michael Jennings will have won that round with a 10 8 margin and is now in control. Minter has a mountain to climb. Is he able to do it? Jennings looks brimful of confidence now, and no wonder. That right hand he caught him with in the last round, an absolute peach. I don't think Minter's recovered from the knockdown. Uh, I think the inactivity is hurting him quite badly. He looks very pedestrian, just plodding forward now, not quite sure how he's going to get himself back into the fight. Well, they told him that he's got to throw punches in bunches, but it's easier said than done. When your senses have been scrambled by a really clean right hand, like that one which Michael Jennings threw in the closing stages of the fourth. Well, Mickey Van saying stop boxing, and he's going to have a word with Michael Jennings and, and also Ross Minter, who's now cut around his left ear. There's blood flowing from his left ear, and I don't think the referee spotted that yet, and that one does not look good. It's a, it's a nightmare for Minter. Your heart has to go out to him. Try as he may, he cannot get to grips with this little buzzsaw of a fighter in Jennings. Jennings just seems to have the answer to everything right now. Well, Minter's corner have spotted it, and there is blood flowing from the left ear. They're going to have to go to work on that in the gap between rounds, and his mobility now is visibly going. Oh, good shot, though! Suddenly, suddenly, one shot brings Minter back into it, and you can see suddenly there's confidence there where it was ebbing away before. Well, you know, Jenny just stepped off the gas just a little bit, and allowed Minter free reign with his own right hand, caught him again, same shot. Minter's digging in, he's got the heart of a lion. He is one brave boy, such a likeable man. In fact, they're two very likeable lads indeed, these two. And Ross Minter showing himself, as you say, to have a real warrior edge. Jennings is just his snappier work rate, he's boxing, jabbing off the hook there. He just he's fresher than Minter. That's beautiful boxing on the back foot by Jennings. 
nice uppercuts, nice variety of punches. Well, Mentor's had his moments, but this has been Jennings' round so far. Dramatic fifth round. Jennings, probably through his boxing ability, though, has taken this one. Although Minter again finishing the round strongly. Stunning him with that right hand which clipped him around the temple area and finishing the last 10 seconds in eye-catching fashion. Good fight, Duke. Good fight. It certainly is. Minter had a fair amount of success in that round, not enough to get, to get in the round, I don't think. But that, that, that's got cut in the ear. That is a nasty one. Cut right in the ear. I don't think I've ever seen one like that before. I just wonder if that might affect his, his balance. Yeah. Well, we've got doctors at ringside who are looking very closely at some of our monitors to see what's going on. And uh, the secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control, maybe where it came, speaking about it after that, but the secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control, Simon Block, looking a slightly concerned man as well. And the doctor is getting up onto the edge of the... At the edge of the ring here to have a look at that ear. Well, time is up. The doctor's had a look at it. And I think he's signalling to Mickey Van that it's OK to go on. But Ross Minty, you suspect, is now on borrowed time. Sixth round, it's a 12-rounder. And a long, long way to go. And Jennings has got a big points advantage. And Jennings has to regroup and get his hands up, but you just noticed towards the end of the, the last round, he dropped his, his left hand quite significantly and was allowing Minter to come through with his right hand. He needs to get his guard back, regroup, and get back to his boxing, not get drawn into a, a, a dogfight with Minter. There's always a tendency for all of these. He's cut outside the ear as well, I'm told, as well as inside it. There's always a tendency for all these fights. Tendency for all these fights and fighters who are, rely on boxers to get dragged into the macho side of things. Well, that ought not to happen with, with Jennings. He's a very seasoned campaigner. He's boxed at this level, you know, several times before and knows full well what's expected. Jennings marking up around the left eye now. And he does himself also have a tendency to cut, and that left eye looks to me as though it is cut. Well, this fight becomes more intriguing as the rounds go on. Jenny's just looking a little bit sorry for himself at the moment. He needs to suck it up. There's a smear of blood around the left eyebrow. It's not, nothing bad at this stage. But Minter will still believe that he's got the heart and the desire to outgame his man. Well, what Mint has managed to do in this round is, is he's managed to get Jennings to slow his pace and to fight at his pace. We're so used to Jennings, you know, getting off like a sprinter in fights and maintaining it. But if you look at his footwork, he's flat-footed and standing in front of Minter. That suits Minter. Minter trying to do as his corner have implored and to fire off that left-hand lead, to fire off the jab. Well, right now it's jab for jab, right hand for right hand, because uh, Jennings' pace has dropped quite significantly. For some strange reason, Jennings has even got his left hand back down by his waist, and he's almost inviting Minter to hit him with the right hand. Closing seconds of the sixth, nearing the halfway point. Jennings in the black shorts, the man from Chorley, with the nickname of the Lurcher. He is the one ahead on points, he's had his man down, but Mint is still pitching. With a new generation of engines and spectacular panoramic windscreen.
fall in love with driving again. Astra from Vauxhall. Go down to your local Vauxhall retailer, where the Astra is available with four years 0% finance when you put down a 30% deposit. So Jennings has injured around that left eye, a smear of grease around that small cut. The left ear of Ross Minter also damaged, and we're into the second half of the fight. Michael Jennings being told by his trainer, Brian Hughes, you are still allowing yourself to be dragged into his fight. He's being implored to use his range, use his mobility. And Minter suddenly is starting to gain in confidence once more. And it helps him to raise his game. You know, I've got Jennings winning the fight, you know, quite, you know, reasonably comfortably with better boxing at this present moment in time. But what Minter's got to do to get back into this fight is just to get closer to him, cut him down quicker and start to land the heavier punches. Jennings just leaving himself a little bit open when he leans in behind that right hand lead and Minter's cute to it and trying to catch him with the left hook counter as he does so and he's having a bit of success. Well this is where, this is where Minter wants to fight, he wants it up close and personal. And unpleasant. And he's, this he's... is a real X-rated contest. They're pulling out all the stops here. We've had everything. We've had the knockdowns, we've had the cuts, we've had the dramas. It's a good fight. Jennings trying to bring them up inside now, trying to get his man with uppercuts. Good right hand from Minter, had to take a couple to get there, but it was a positive shot. The power shot of that exchange came from Minter. Well, I'll tell you what, he's creeping back in for me. Mint has found a way with the right hand where Jennings keeps dropping the left. He's playing Jennings at his own game and just coming over the top with the right hand. There it is again, just missed. Better boxing by Jennings. I think he was hurt by that right hand. He looks really tired all of a sudden, oh, Jennings. There's to be more dramatic twists in this tale. We really fancied this one to be an outstanding contest and it's showing up to be every inch of what we hoped. Can Minter haul his way back here? What a display of bravery it would be if he could. Well, there's the right hand again. Can Minter come back from the brink? Minter always has that tendency to cut, and there's a smear of blood around his nose now. He's not going to be a pretty, pretty sight once this contest ends. I wish that Jennings would get his hands up, box sensibly, because he's fighting Minter's fight right now. This is a mince around. Mickey Van doesn't like that, but it's Minter who enters the aggressor. Compact 4x4 from Volkswagen. There are all sorts of people in the Army. Discover more about yourself with the Army Pathfinder at armyjobs.mod.uk. The Jennings corner are start to get, starting to get a little bit concerned about the way this fight's going. Michael Jennings, the champion, being told by his trainer, Brian Hughes, that you are not doing what we've worked on in the gym and that you are allowing yourself to be dragged into a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. Get back to your boxing. Minter, on your card, Duke, has won the last two rounds. Well, he's landed the clean the heavier punches, maybe not the cleaner punches, and he's still being just as aggressive. And what we've seen in Jennings, we've seen him drop off the pace, we've seen his hands drop, and we've seen him getting hit quite quite regularly. So yeah, I've given him into the last two rounds. 
So they've still got Jennings ahead, but Minta is closing the gap. Simon, come on. And again. Good body shot. You saw Jennings wince as that right hand went in. But that's good quality work from Jennings as well. Lovely jabs. But a terrific left hook from Minter. And just for a moment, Jennings looked as though he might have been stunned by that one. I, mu I must admit, sorry, John, I must admit, I don't like the new style of Jennings. You know, he's taking unnecessary risk, which, which he, ne he doesn't ordinarily take. looking to plant himself, isn't he, and deliver power shots. Not normally the way. Maybe he looks at the defeat against Young Mutley and uh, he thinks that the one defeat he got by resorting to just a skitter-scatter, tip-tap approach and working behind the jab, maybe he went away from that and said, I need to load up more on my shots and make my punches count. But in so doing, is he making himself more vulnerable? Absolutely, I mean... Jennings, for me, at, at looking at the two of these boxers right now, looks the more tired. He's Jennings, lost, lost his composure again. Jennings, who started so well, almost had Minter down in the opening round, did have him down in the fourth round, but Minter has, on Duke's card, won round six and seven. He won the second as well, so it's not yet an insurmountable lead. And Minta is clearly fancying it, the body language tells you. Well, the thing is now also, Jennings' punches are falling short. He needs to get back to working that beautiful jab that he has. Good shot. Really good shot, and this is anxious times now for Minta. He's almost down, he's hanging on. He could fall before the bell. His legs have gone. Oh, that came just at the right moment. He almost went. He was hanging on desperately. It was looking as though it could have been another Minter round. And then in the last 10 seconds, Jennings nailed him and Minter almost went. Let's look again. Watch this shot from Jennings. Beautiful sweep and left hook. Caught Minter flush. Minter tried to bob and weave out of trouble, but then the right uppercut caught him again. And at this point, he's totally gone and out on his feet. Well, he was all over the shop there, was Ross Minter. He'd won the round, arguably, but Jennings, with a real last 10 second blitz, came storming back. That's how Duke McKenzie, former world champion, of course, that's how he's scoring it. Jennings by three. to the ninth round, it's a 12-rounder. If Duke's scorecard's right, Minter wins, needs to win the last four. Well, if Jennings plants his punches now, picks his punches, this fight will be over because Minter's not ready. He's not right. He has not recovered from that last, that last round. Took some really big shots. Jennings senses it and senses that the end could be right now. Punches. Jennings Minter looking, tries yeah. to ride out the storm. Yeah, sorry, John. Jennings looking for the knockout. Minter now trading on guts and bravery. Yeah, Minter bloodied, battered, but still fighting on. Ross Minter only one stopped. I've once on cuts, but the other time by Curiel, stopped by punches, if you like, and Jennings will want to repeat that. Big win for Michael Jennings, this, if he can win it. And look at this again, good uppercuts, followed by the left hook. Every time 
that Jennings hits Minter, it shudders into his boots. They started the round so fast, will he now have to take a breather? Has he maybe gambled by throwing so much leather in the opening 90 seconds or so that Minter, as we suggested, might be able to ride it out now? He needs a big last minute, though, Ross Minter, if he's going to win this round. His fighting instinct will tell him that. I don't know if he's actually got it in him to step on the gas and really, really push Jennings back. Jennings, at this present moment in time, can't miss him. Minter looking desperately tired. Flat-footed, heavy-armed, heavy-legged. And to try and emphasise that, Jennings up onto his toes, using his mobility and trying to show that he is the man with the fitness, with the spring in his legs. Jennings being told to double his jab up and Minter bravely coming forward, winging in those hooks to body and head. Oh, great shot! Terrific left hand! Well, how's Minter going to get up from that? Johnny Eames is saying, stay down, take the eight count, take the eight count. Mickey Vance having a close, close look. Eight, and he's up. Is he fit to go on? An experienced referee looks into his eyes and says, yes, I'm not so sure. No, he's got it could end, it's the, yes, the right toe. The fight is all over. Mickey Vance has stopped it here and now. Ross Minter doesn't like it. He thought he could have fought on. But what a display of bravery, and in the end, what an outstanding display as well from Michael Jennings. He did what was necessary. He landed bombs in that last round, had his man in desperate trouble, and he could well have been stopped on the knockdown, took the eight count, and then, in the end, it was a compassionate call by his own corner, who threw in the towel and said, enough is enough. And the old champion would have loved to have seen some do it tonight, but Ross, when it came to it, was not quite the equal of Michael Jennings. It was a really good performance by Jennings. When you look at it on the whole, the left hook that finished off Minter was a fantastic shot. Just when you thought Minter had some kind of foothold and was coming back into, that's what Jennings pulled out the bag. That's the sign of a champion. From another angle, well, there was no coming back from that. Minter was allowed to fight on when he could well have been stopped there and then. Took, it was just yet another example of the heart of the man that he got up and wanted to continue. And even when the towel came in, he wanted to go back to his corner and he was ready for another round. And Michael Jennings, well, was that the best performance of his career? Quite arguably so. At 30, still the WBU champion, and he wins by stoppage. And it, you have to take your hat off to him. Fitness, accuracy. At times, he got himself dragged into Ross Minter's fight. But at the end of the day, in the final analysis, he's still the champion. Here's the Master of Ceremonies, Mark Burdis, with confirmation of the result. Ladies and gentlemen, at two minutes, 59 seconds of round nine, your up. referee, Mickey Van of Leeds, has stopped the fight. He deemed that Ross Minter was in no fit state to continue. The winner in the blue corner from Chorley and still the WBU World Welterweight Champion, Michael Jennings. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a huge round of applause for the very brave and gallant Ross the Boss Minter. Phil Lundgren will now present the WBU World Welterweight Championship belt. Fantastic fight. Michael Jennings uh, looking over this corner and uh, giving us a little bit of a wink, saying I'll be able to talk to you in a moment. And would you believe it, Ross Minter going across and saying to his fans, I'm sorry, but I am all right. Everything that's good about boxing really encapsulated in those nine rounds. Amir Khan still to come, that'll be over on ITV1. But when you rejoin us here, we will hear from both those gladiators. <laughs>